Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and today's video is another episode of our Wix Studio Simplified series where I help simplify Wix Studio. Now for today's video, we're gonna be talking about responsive AI. Responsive AI is an amazing tool built into Wix Studio where it allows Wix Studio to design the layouts for your other breakpoints at a click of a button. It's super powerful and easy to use. Now for today's video, we are gonna be building the same exact section in two different ways and letting responsive AI build the layouts for the smaller breakpoints. And we're gonna be testing to see which layout or which build style for the section works the best. Let's go ahead and get started. So like I said in the intro, here we are in Wix Studio and we're gonna be building the same exact section in two different ways. So for the first section, we're gonna be using cells. So what I want to do is just add two columns here. Inside of this, what we're gonna do is just add maybe 5% margin and we're going to dock that to all sides. And then what we're gonna do is add five VW as a gap here because five VW in this instance is basically the same exact thing as 5%. So it looks pretty clean. Let's also go ahead and make the section maybe like 720 pixels in height, just like that. And then over here on the right hand side, let's add an image very easily just by dragging and dropping this image. We will stretch it and under the corners, let's go ahead and add a rounded edge just like that. Over here on the left hand side, I'm just gonna keep it very simple. I'm just gonna add a text element or a title element. We're gonna add a paragraph and then we're gonna add a very simple button here as well. Now let's go ahead and grab all three of these elements. We'll stack them together. We'll align all the items to the left. Let's expand this out quite a bit. And then for item spacing, we'll go ahead and set it to 5% and we'll go ahead and center this content here, just like that. And I think that looks pretty good. Um, what I will say here is I'm gonna unstack real quick and then I'm gonna grab all of these elements again. I'm going to adjust the size of this button and then we're gonna grab all the items here and restack them just because there was a lot of extra space on the stack that we don't need. And we'll just go ahead and recenter it. And I think that looks pretty clean. That is the section. Again, it's very, very simple. Now let's go ahead and build it in a different way. So what I want to do is set the height to 720. Then we're gonna grab a container. We can go ahead and stretch it. And with this section, let's go ahead and add the 5% padding here. And we'll do that to all sides. Perfect. We'll go ahead and make sure the height is still set to 720 because typically after you add padding, it adds height. So we want to make sure we change that back to 720 for us real quick. And we'll also remove the background color of this container. We're going to split this into a grid using the advanced CSS grid. So we'll go ahead and press apply. We're going to add a two by one grid here, and we're going to add that five VW gap. So as you can see here, we're already looking very, very similar. I'm just going to copy this image. We'll paste it down here into this container. We'll stretch it. Then let's grab this stack here and we'll bring it down here and paste it. Now with this, we'll want to make sure it's in the left grid cell. So I'm just going to drag it to keep its proportions and we're just going to make sure it is centered. Fantastic. So now we have two sections that look identical, but they were built in a different way. But now we can go ahead and test the responsive AI. So what we're going to do is select this section and you'll notice this little sparkly icon here. That is gonna be responsive AI. So let's go ahead and click on this. We'll press generate now, and it's gonna go through the process of designing the website on different breakpoints. Now, once it is done, it's gonna enter like a preview mode for us. And what we can do is easily just drag the handles in and kind of test the responsiveness. So now we just crossed over into tablet breakpoint. I think this looks pretty good. And then for mobile, this is kind of what it designed and it looks similar to this and it does not look bad at all. So if we are happy with the design, we can of course just go ahead and press apply design. If you don't like it, then you can press discard changes. However, even though responsive AI does do a great job, I do wanna change the layout of this image a little bit, but I do think Responsive AI gave us a great starting point and did a bulk of the work for us without us having to do much at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and press apply design. Now for this image, I wanna come over here and maybe we'll add like 5% to the left for margin. And we'll just do that to the left, to the right hand side as well. 
So now we have something that looks like this. And I think that looks super clean. But now let's go back up to desktop. Let's grab this second section down here that we used where we actually used a container instead of cells. And we'll go ahead and go through the process with responsive AI. Okay, for this one, something interesting happened. When we pressed responsive AI, it did push the image even here on desktop all the way to the side. It's almost like it removed the padding that we applied. But just for fun, let's go ahead and check this out. We'll go ahead and resize it all the way down to mobile. I will say a tablet, it looks pretty good as far as everything else goes besides it removing the padding still. But if we go down to mobile, you'll notice something interesting happened. It basically switched the image and the text here. The text hypothetically should have been on top. However, typically on mobile devices, you have an image and then you have the text below. Maybe this was because Wix Studio thought this was the hero section. So it left the text here on top. And then for down here, since this was the second section, it made the image on top. That may be the cause, but I don't, I don't actually know. And then another thing to note is it pushed the text all the way to the edges of this box here. Now, once again, we can easily just discard the changes. However, it did do a bulk of the work and it's not gonna be hard to edit. So we can go ahead and press apply design. The first thing I want to do is come over here to desktop and I wanna grab this container here and I wanna set the columns back to one FR for both of these. Okay, I'm going to unstretch this image and restretch it, okay? And we'll grab this container and we'll re-add our little grid gap here. So now we have the same exact section that we built before. We'll come down to tablet. I think it looks pretty good here. And then we'll come down to mobile and we need to adjust this a little bit more. So what we need to do is grab the section here and maybe we need to re-add our padding. So I'm gonna set this to 5% and we'll lock this to all sides, okay? I think that looks perfect. You can see that the amount of work that we had to do to fix quote unquote the section was very minimal and it looks basically identical to the top one up here. Um, if we wanted to switch these, it wouldn't be very hard at all. We would just have to send the stack to the top and then under the layers panel, we can grab the image and we could send this one to the bottom. And, we knew, and then we would need to adjust the container down here, the row from 12 pixels to let's just say 200 pixels for now. Um, we can adjust that a little bit more and we can even switch this to like viewport percentage or any other thing that we want to use as well. But as you can see, very, very simple to edit. There's not really much work that has to go into either doing it with containers or just using cells. You can see that it does most of the work even when using a container and it doesn't maybe end up quite how you expected it to. It still does a bulk of the work and it's not hard to tweak it to get it to be exactly how you initially wanted it to be. But that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix Studio content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I will see you on the next one.